You see, we have a birthright through Jesus Christ. We can be born again. We, we, we can make Him the Lord of this nation. But it's not going to happen because people are so full of pride now. They think they know everything. I've got college knowledge. I've been to Harvard. I've been to Princeton. And I have so much more knowledge than God. But that's old news. That's history. I'm above that now. That's the attitude we have in America, people. Mm -hmm. That is Esau. That's the Edomites. And guess what's going to happen? He's going to bring the stars and the eagle down. We think, oh, because we're Americans. Look, we can be more patriotic than we can Christian many times. It's time to put Jesus first because this is what's coming. He say, man, this is all Greek to me. Well, it was Greek to me too until the Lord showed it to me. <laughs> Go to Ezekiel chapter 12. My goodness, I hope I ain't going to. Oh, that's right. I got all night. <laughs> I know it's quiet in here. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 17. This is why we need to be praying. We need to be interceding for those loved ones that's not saved, for those family members that need the Lord's touch. We even need to be praying for the leaders of this nation. I know it's not easy to pray for some of them, but we need to pray for them. We're supposed to be like the Beatitudes. We're supposed to do good to those who despitefully use us. We're still supposed to pray for them. <laughs> Woo! I know it's tough, though. But this is what he's telling him in Ezekiel. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, eat your bread with quaking, and drink your water with trembling and with carefulness. And say unto the people of the land, Thus saith the Lord God of the inhabitants of Jerusalem and of the land of Israel, They shall eat their bread with carefulness and drink their water with astonishment at their land. Maybe at, at hurt their excuse me, astonished that her land may be desolate from all that is therein because of the violence of all them who dwell therein. And the cities that are inhabited shall be laid to waste, and the land shall be desolate, and you shall know that I am the Lord. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is that proverb that you have in the land of Israel, saying, The days are prolonged, and every vision fails. Tell them, Thus saith the Lord God, I will make this proverb to cease. You see, many people have heard the warnings of many different men over the years. You see, on the day of Rosh Hashanah, they start blowing the trumpets. It's called the Feast of Trumpets. <laughs> and they blow this trumpet at least a hundred times for ten days to call everybody to a national repentance. They blow this trumpet. Believe me, God has raised up people like David Wilkerson and many other ones that blow the trumpet. They blow the shofar. They sounded the warning and said, Repent, America, this is coming. And now we're starting to see a shaking, and still there's no repentance. Why? Because what happens is sin hardens the heart. When it comes in, you may not lose salvation at first. No. You may go in a few years with sin in your life, and I'm not saying you still lost salvation. You, your faith is placed in Christ, maybe. You may be caught up in something. However, if you continue, Hebrew says it'll wax your heart cold, and your heart will get cold against God, and you'll turn your faith one day from the Lord Jesus Christ into something else. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you just sold your birthright, just like Esau. And when you sell your birthright, guess what happens? The judgment of God. You're open. You are naked to the judgment of the living God. It says in Hebrews right here, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins. No covering left is what it means. Naked is for the nation. But a certain fearful looking for the judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries, he who despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall be thought worthy who has trodden underfoot the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and has done despite under the Spirit of grace. For we know him who has said, Vengeance belongs to me, I will recompense, says the Lord, and again the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of a living God. What in the world? How is it that we've lost our trembling when he talks about eating your bread with quaking? How is it that we've seen what happened in 9-11? You've got 3,000 people that died, and yet we go back as business as normal, and we get worse. 
How is it that we're so blind that the same enemy that attacked at 9-11 now has become and taken over our streets and are building mosques as the churches are declining, the mosques are coming up everywhere? How is it? Because it's part of the judgment of God. Now we got a new year coming. We got the last year, which we had 10 years to repent. Now we're in that 11th year. We're in the year of the judgment of God. And yet there's still people that have not repented. Still people that's playing church. Still people that won't even go to church. Still people that won't even give Jesus the glory in their lives. They're still sitting with a hardened heart. And we got this about to happen. There's no telling what's going to happen with the financial institution. God has shown us by the tires being knocked down, by the sycamore tree being hewed down, He's trying to tell them this is coming. Now we're $16.5 trillion in debt, not 15 no more, not 14 no more, $16.5 trillion now. You keep on, the debt clock's moving like this. If you go look at it on the internet, it'll give you a heart attack. That's why you can't look at those things coming upon the earth. Because Jesus said hearts will fail people for looking upon things that's coming upon the earth. You must keep your eyes upon Jesus for that perfect peace, Isaiah 26.3, or you're going to lose your mind. You've got doctors now that's putting people on pharmacia. They love to get them jokers in witchcraft and put them on sedatives and put them on all kinds of medicine. Why? Because if you read Revelation chapter 18, you'll find out by her sorceries, which the root word is pharmacia. Hello. Where pharmacies took their root word from. Believe me. It messes with the mind and they will have control over you when the Obama mark on page 1001 to 1008 comes to pass. They want everybody chipped by 2014. Goes into the right hand. It's called a healthcare registration device. It's the same thing as like in your cell phone. It's an RFID chip. Believe me, if they can get everybody on medicine and you've got to have that medicine, they're going to have you. Ooh. I know it's mighty quiet. <laughs> Go to Revelation chapter 18 since I said that. I'm going to cut it short. I've got to stop here in a minute anyway. Mm. Have you thought it mighty peculiar that everybody is bipolar, tripolar, <laughs> quadpolar? Good grief. How's all this coming out now? If you do a careful study, you'll find out that in the late 60s, early 70s, this came through uh, the psych psychiatrists and um, psychologists. They put this in place, and plus who's backing them is the pharmaceutical companies. There's no proven fact that anybody's bipolar, that there is any type of chemical going crazy in the brain. They have to do a blood test to find out if there's a deformity or a malfunction, but they can't do that by just looking at your eyes and saying, hello, how are you today? 